the first quantum computer to surpass the best classical supercomputer on a computational task, random circuit sampling. Google's quantum AI just cracked open Nikola Tesla's long-lost notebooks, and what it uncovered might change everything we thought we knew about science in the future. Inside those faded pages were concepts so advanced, they align with discoveries only now emerging in 2025. But here's the twist. Tesla wrote them nearly 100 years ago. Remember those strange energy pulses in Godzilla vs. Kong, or the gravity-bending tech in the Marvels? Turns out, Tesla was sketching out ideas eerily similar, decades before CGI or quantum physics hit the mainstream. A lot of his patents were, yeah. were taken, sealed up by the U.S. government uh, for whatever reason, I don't know. So what exactly did Tesla know? How far ahead was he really? And more importantly, what's still hidden in those pages? Waiting to be decoded? The secret to limitless energy. In December 2024, Google's Quantum AI Lab introduced a processor called Willow. It's a 72-qubit superconducting quantum chip. That number might sound abstract to you, but if you knew what it really means, you would not believe how powerful it is. You see, a task that would take billions of years for the world's fastest classical supercomputer, like modeling large-scale quantum systems, was completed by Willow in under five minutes. So instead of working through one scenario at a time, like a traditional computer, Willow can explore millions of possible outcomes at once using the laws of quantum mechanics. So what did Google decide to analyze with this massive leap in computing power? Tesla's lost notebooks. Many of Tesla's writings remained classified or ignored for decades. After his death in 1943, government agents seized his documents, including a mysterious black notebook labeled Government. Only about 250 pages were declassified in 2016. And in those papers, Tesla mentioned something unfinished he was working on, a machine he called the ultimate amplifier. Quantum AI was the perfect tool to revisit this. Where previous generations of researchers could only guess what Tesla meant, the AI could actually solve the math, simulate the physics, and test the outcomes in a way no human ever could. And what it found was remarkable. The ultimate amplifier that Tesla mentioned in his notes turned out to be a device designed to control and direct energy densities at specific frequencies. It could tune into natural electromagnetic resonances and amplify them, concentrating energy without wires. In modern terms, it was an early design for wireless power transmission on a massive scale. The quantum simulation showed that under the right frequency, Tesla's design could send energy across long distances with almost no loss, using nothing but the natural conductivity of the Earth or atmosphere. It is something Tesla tried to prove at Colorado Springs and later at Wardenclyffe Tower. But without modern materials or the ability to model the field behavior, he could not complete it in his lifetime. A key piece of this was Tesla's use of what he called non-Herzian waves, standard electromagnetic radiation, like radio waves, light, and x-rays, spreads out as it moves and weakens over distance. That is described by the inverse square law, double the distance, and the signal becomes one-fourth as strong. Tesla, however, claimed he was working with waves that didn't behave that way. He described energy that could travel great distances without dispersing. At the time, scientists dismissed it. But in the AI's simulation, applying Tesla's field parameters resulted in longitudinal waveforms, which are waves that move by compressing and stretching in the direction of travel, much like sound waves in air. These are different from the transverse waves described by classical electromagnetism, and while they are not predicted by Maxwell's equations, they do show up in quantum field models under very specific configurations. And then this AI model found something even stranger, scalar wave coupling. Now, in modern physics, scalar fields are areas where energy exists but doesn't move in a specific direction. It is just there, like a pressure zone in space, which sounds abstract. Well, Tesla somehow described this long before physicists even had a name for it. He noted that when two of his energy waves aligned under the right conditions, energy didn't just increase, it appeared. The AI ran those same conditions and saw it happen. 
stable, high-energy zones forming in empty space, exactly where Tesla said they would. This happened without any batteries or wires. But it didn't stop there. In several notes, Tesla mentioned something bizarre. Energy pulses arriving too early, faster than they should. He said the signals showed up before expected or without measurable delay. For decades, scientists brushed this off as a mistake. Bad clocks, poor instruments, maybe just wishful thinking. But when the AI modeled these same conditions, it noticed something no one had dared to confirm before. Superluminal propagation. Now to be clear, this does not mean objects were flying faster than light. That would break physics. But the field itself was changing faster than the rules should allow. The simulations showed energy shifts traveling across space so quickly, they looked instantaneous. Nothing material was moving, but the effect jumped. In practical terms, let's say you flip a switch in Paris and watch the lights flicker in Tokyo before the electric signal could even get there. That's the kind of thing we are talking about. And Tesla noticed this. With early 20th century tools, in dusty labs, with brass coils and analog meters, he observed something that today we can only model using the most advanced quantum systems in the world. He didn't have Einstein's equations, he didn't have quantum field theory, but somehow he was tracking the footprints of phenomena we are only just now starting to explain. But these were not the only strange discoveries found in Tesla's notebook. Vacuum energy. In the deeper layers of Tesla's notes, there were patterns even more ambitious than global wireless energy. These were the pages filled with diagrams that didn't connect to any known power source, energy symbols that pointed to no visible generator, and strange combinations of coils and field chambers that had no obvious input. For years, these pages were dismissed. But Google's quantum AI saw something else. As the processor continued to decode Tesla's work, it found repeated references to something Tesla called radiant energy. It referred to a background presence, an ambient, ever-present force that Tesla believed filled all space. At the time, mainstream science assumed the vacuum was empty, but Tesla insisted that space itself held structure and energy, and that under the right conditions, this hidden reservoir could be tapped. Modern physics now recognizes what Tesla couldn't prove in his lifetime. The vacuum is not empty. Even in the absence of particles and fields, Quantum mechanics shows that the vacuum still holds zero-point energy, which is the lowest energy state of a field, still fluctuating even at absolute zero. Tesla seemed to know this intuitively, but his challenge was practical. How to extract it? Tesla didn't just have one idea for pulling energy out of empty space, he had seven. The first method was all about setting up the perfect echo. Tesla believed that if you placed an electromagnetic field inside a sealed chamber and hit the right frequency, the energy would bounce back and forth in a steady rhythm, what's called a standing wave. That back and forth could slowly pull energy from the vacuum itself. Nothing visible moves, but the energy builds up, like turning a quiet hum into a full-blown vibration. The second method took a more hands-on approach, spin the field, Tesla designed a setup where strong magnetic fields would rotate at high speeds in a donut-shaped path, which we call a toroid. He believed this could shear through the hidden layers of space and expose deeper energy that normally stays locked inside the quantum vacuum. Think of it like creating a ripple deep inside something that is usually still. Then came the third method. Tesla suggested firing precisely timed bursts of electricity over and over at carefully chosen intervals. The idea was to hit the vacuum with just the right pulse, at just the right time, to knock it slightly out of balance. If the math was right, the vacuum would respond with a sort of snapback, releasing energy to restore equilibrium. His fourth strategy was based on wave interference. You take two waves moving out of sync, completely out of phase, and direct them to collide. For a split second when they meet, their fields don't cancel out. Instead, they form a kind of imbalance in space. According to Tesla, that moment of distortion could be enough to trigger a burst of zero-point energy. The fifth method is where Tesla built what looked like stacked coils, layered vertically, each one tuned to a different frequency. 
As the energy passed through the spirals, the structure would compress the field from within, kind of like squeezing a spring while feeding it more power. This internal pressure, if managed right, could push energy out of the vacuum and into the system. The sixth design took a completely different route, geometry. Tesla described using shaped reflectors to trap and concentrate energy at very specific points. These locations, known as nodal points, are where multiple waves intersect and hold their shape. According to his notes, that's where radiant energy could gather and be pulled into a usable form. Finally, the seventh method combined elements from the other six. Multiple chambers, tuned to different resonances, working in sync across separate locations. Tesla said it needed exact timing, perfect alignment, and total isolation from background noise, meaning no stray radio waves, no electrical interference, nothing. That kind of clean lab environment didn't exist in his time. But the blueprint was there. The only reason this structure was not seen earlier was that Tesla buried it under layers of linguistic and physical fragmentation. One section would describe a formula in German, but reference a drawing in English. Another would begin an idea in Serbian and then abruptly stop, only to continue pages later in French, hidden under unrelated calculations. None of it was indexed. None of it was linear. The quantum AI handled this differently than any human researcher could. It recognized semantic patterns, cross-referencing word usage, technical symbols, and even pen pressure across scanned pages to reconstruct Tesla's train of thought. For example, it found that phrases that once seemed metaphorical were, in fact, field parameters encoded through metaphor. Handshake of the ether was not a philosophical phrase. It referred to a specific resonance threshold between fields. Silent breath of the mirror was a reference to vacuum recoil after field cancellation. These terms appeared nonsensical in isolation, but when placed back into their original technical context, they became part of precise engineering instructions. Even more fascinating than this were the notes he wrote about the death ray. Blueprints for a death ray. Tesla called it Teleforce, which is a directed energy weapon he claimed could take down entire armies without ever touching a battlefield. Most people thought it was an exaggeration, a final flourish from a fading genius. But when Google's quantum AI ran simulations based on his diagrams, it uncovered a working design. The AI didn't just clean up Tesla's rough sketches. It reconstructed a complete blueprint for a particle beam weapon, refined enough to rival the design principles behind today's particle accelerators. But instead of a building-sized machine like CERN, this one was meant to be compact. According to the model, Tesla's concept could be built on a scale small enough to mount on a truck, or potentially an aircraft. At its core, the system generated tens of millions of volts to ionize metallic particles and accelerate them down a vacuum channel using magnetic coils. What came out the other end was a stream of high-speed particles, focused into a narrow, high-density beam capable of physically striking a target from miles away. In modern terms, this is similar to kinetic energy weapons, like the satellite strike in Oblivion or the railgun tests shown in military demonstrations. But Tesla's design was different in one crucial way. It didn't require large-scale infrastructure. He was building for mobility, efficiency, and silence. He claimed this weapon could destroy 10,000 airplanes at 250 miles distance. That sounded impossible in the 1930s. But with today's supercapacitors, precision control systems, and vacuum containment materials, the AI's reconstruction confirmed that it is doable now. In testing simulations, the beam maintained cohesion, stayed accurate across long distances, and required far less power than previously assumed. If constructed, it would not just match nuclear weapons, it could replace them. And there is evidence that people knew this. After Tesla's death in 1943, U.S. defense authorities quietly launched a project called Project Nick. Though much of it remains classified, Surviving documents describe an investigation into directed particle discharge devices using field acceleration. This language matches Tesla's notes word for word. No prototype was ever confirmed, but fragments of internal memos align closely with what the AI reconstructed in 2024. Specific capacitor arrays. Vacuum tube configurations. 
pulse triggers. The math lines up, which makes us think, why was it buried for so long? Unlike a missile or bomb, a particle beam weapon leaves little evidence. It cannot be intercepted. It does not require fuel transport. And it does not trigger alarms until it has already done its job. That kind of weapon changes how warfare works. Tesla may have realized this. His notes grow more cautious the deeper they go. And maybe that's why this design never left his notebooks. Because it was too powerful to trust anyone with. So, now we know. The Death Ray was never a myth. It was a weapon ahead of its time. And now, its design is back on the table. Complete, simulated, and entirely real. But that's not all. Many other notes in his notebook prove that he was at least a hundred years ahead of modern science. How Tesla beat modern science. Using quantum computing, researchers fed Tesla's old resonance charts, which were recorded in the 1890s, into modern data models. What they found was impossible to ignore. Frequencies Tesla logged more than a century ago lined up perfectly with phenomena that were not discovered until the 21st century. First, his values matched gravitational wave anomalies recorded by LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. These waves, caused by massive cosmic events like black hole mergers, were only confirmed in 2015. Yet Tesla had already mapped frequencies that align with them, down to the decimal. Then came the match with Schumann resonance, which are natural electromagnetic pulses generated between Earth's surface and the ionosphere. These were not fully understood until the 1950s. Again, Tesla had documented them decades earlier with surprising precision. And perhaps the strangest thing is that Tesla's frequencies also matched the fast radio bursts coming from deep space, only discovered in 2007. Bursts he could not have known existed, yet somehow he recorded them. None of this should have been possible with 19th century equipment, but the matches are too precise to dismiss. How do you think Tesla knew all this long before modern science caught up? Was it intuition, lost technology, or something we have yet to understand? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if this kind of discovery blows your mind too, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We will come back with more. Goodbye for now.